coming up on mountain hermeneutics masculinity what is it is it like a 1950s version of john wayne is it this new version of red pill dudes who believe that you got to make a lot of money drive fast cars sleep as many women as possible or is it maybe this idea that it's toxic or maybe can we turn to the bible for answers spoiler alert we can so we'll get into it <laughs> Listening to Mount Hermeneutics, where three Marines give their perspective on God, faith, and spirituality with a heavy lean on the Divine Council worldview. This is not your grandma's Sunday school, nor is it always for the Christian vein of heart. Nothing about who we are or what we say make us experts, but you better believe we'll have a take, and perhaps it won't suck. I think this is going to be a short show, so I, this this whole thing. But, but then again, we're, we never have a short show. This so, show tonight? Yeah. Oh, I, got, a short I, got, show. I got stuff to say, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, then uh, strike that. We will be here all night. So I think, um, so if you listened to the show last week and you thought Brian was a bumbling idiot, now you know why. Now, I, now you know. I, I, I kind of feel like that's fair. Like I kind of was <laughs> a bumbling idiot. Bellas, what's happening? What's going on? Hey, Dre. Dre, what, oh, what's, what's, what's new, man? What have you been doing? Uh, let's see. You get Mother's Day. I uh, I turned. I don't. I don't know what the authorized age for my wife is, but I turned that on Monday. Uh, you got. You it's got. Always, you got older on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I got older. <laughs> so, uh, my my birthday usually coincides with Mother's Day, and it it works out pretty good now that our kids are adults because you know Mother's Day is a weekend and it gives the kids an excuse to come see us. Cooper drove down. Uh, you know we uh we we all met for you know lunch well, i think we went to church that day so then they they stick around like oh it's your birthday too dad cool yeah i'll stay you know so so it's good yeah um yeah nice yeah busy week at work you know doing marine things feels good to be around the boys again little little field work as well getting out getting dirty yeah, a little bit yeah right a little on. bit so all right brian what's up man uh I, I feel like I have a lot I have a lot going on. I can't uh I can't really think of it. Just it's uh so busy you can't even stop to think about it. That's busy. That's right. That's, right. that's exactly what's going on. I finished reading the three body problem trilogy. Did you read it in the like, original Mandarin or did you read it in English? Of course, of course. That's the only way I could read it. <laughs> I, I read it in Mandarin. He's a he's a sub, not dub, you know. It's a I, I and then I tran I I made my own translation and then I reread the translation. Nice to check. Did which, you do a good job? Uh, you know, I, 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 I give myself about a 92%. Yeah, I, you don't pretty, say it. Everybody else says it. Right. Which is pretty good considering I don't know a word of Mandarin. They, they, um, so. they say, sir, sir, it's the best translation. I mean, I'm not saying it. Everybody else is saying it. <laughs> you, can, you can ask, you can ask anyone. People often do. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was really good. It's, uh, it's really dark. It's a, uh, Basically, a, uh, a an answer to the Fermi paradox. Um, that that you know, Fermi paradox, that's the one that if there's intelligent life, why haven't we found it yet? And if we haven't, uh, is there? Is that the one? Basically, that the one? yeah. Basically, yeah. Uh, there's a high probability of there being extraterrestrial intelligent life. Yeah, we haven't. Yet we haven't encountered any of it. Why would that be? Mm -hmm. Um and this gives an answer. I reject the premise of the Fermi paradox. I don't think it's a matter of probability. If if God exists, it's not a matter of probability. Um, if it, it presupposes that life is accidental, right? And uh, therefore, it's just a matter of odds. If it's mm -hmm. not accidental, if God exists, then there's no calculating the odds, right? Um, but anyway, the 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 trilogy was good. It was really. Yeah really dark gave me a lot to think about um, i watched the series and i also yeah. did I, I watched it in the original mandarin as well it was on, good on netflix yeah or the the uh amazon prime prime yeah you're right it was on prime yeah okay. it was good i really prime? enjoyed it yeah huh? it's really good yeah there's a there's a I, I guess a chinese made one on on prime that does the whole series but huh. uh and then the Netflix one. The the Netflix one, I actually there there are trade offs 
than the Netflix one, but it, I I think it's I think it's an improvement. Or was it Netflix? Yeah, it ends in a way that there's there could be more t- another season. Are you talking about the Netflix one or the Prime Video one? Well, now you have me. Now I have no idea where I watched it. Netflix has has a series. You stream that shit. That's it's what it is. The people from uh, Game of Thrones did it, um, and there's a bunch of Game of Thrones actors in it. And then there's then there's one on Amazon Prime. That's that's in Chinese. It's got subtitles. Okay. No, I watched the 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 made for English audience one. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and it was really good. And it ends in a way that I think there could definitely be more to it. Um, so yeah, they only really kind of adapted the first book with aspects from the other two books. It's not, it's it's not it's not told in a it it the narrative isn't linear, so it's sort of uh but yeah, there there's there's there should be two more seasons at least because it's a trilogy. Cool. Yeah, that'd be good. Right ho. All right. Matt. Yeah. Um had had some family stuff going on, man. Uh for those that know us, like there's it's out there in Facebook, whatever. I don't want to really get into it on this show. It's a little bit of a downer. But my daughter had some some medical stuff going on. So she's she's recovering, but she's she's okay. It's uh you know, it's an interesting time in the world when your kids are growing up and having adult stuff going on. But uh other than that, not a lot yeah, going sure. on. Um yeah. So what are we what are we cool. talking about? We're talking about talking about uh well, I think that the, the lots of lots of stuff in the world just talking about masculinity all the time, and I thought maybe maybe the three of us could could chime in. Yeah. So the newest thing probably is this this hullabaloo with Harrison Butker, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, he he he's a kicker for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a football um, team, Brian. That's, that's a, that is a football team. I'm aware. They are the Super Bowl winning football team. Um. He was invited to give a commencement speech at Benedictine College, which is a Catholic school. And, I think that's uh, an I, important part of the the story. <laughs> yeah, and uh, is it his second? Is it his second uh, commencement speech? It's weird how all of a sudden all he was a, it. I didn't know that. I, I think it is. I, I don't remember his first one, but he maybe he did one at his alma mater, Georgia Tech. Oh, okay. One one time. Anyway, uh, there on social media, if you if you look. Whether you're in the the sports world or the you know the feminist world, um, he says some things that I didn't really find controversial, but there was controversy in it anyway. Uh, and then I think the week before that, because we're a little we're a little late on this episode because of Mother's Day, and I think this comes on the heels of the big uh, the bear debate. That's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> so. so, there's, so we, there's been a lot in the media lately in this in this topic, kind of broadly. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I, I, uh, the, the first thing I wanted to point out was I, I found this really interesting. I, I, I picked a fight on Facebook over this Harrison Bucker thing, just because I wanted to, because it, it abuses me for those that that know me, and um, he is currently the number two highest selling Kansas City Chiefs jersey, just behind he, Travis he, Kelsey. Yeah, yeah, he passed Mahomes. He passed Mahomes, <laughs> who was the best player, like in the league. <laughs> so, so, so Brian Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback, and as we know, most times quarterbacks get all the publicity, right? And he yeah. was always the highest selling jersey until uh, Travis Kelsey started dating this chick that's apparently popular in the pop music circles. I heard and, of that. Um, yeah, and so then he became the highest selling jersey. But uh, this guy is just—he's in between those two now. A kicker. And kicker jerseys, yeah. the most famous kicker of the last twenty years is probably uh, Pat uh, um, McAfee, right? And, and I don't think he has a he has an entertaining podcast. That's yeah, and I, I don't think his jerseys ever sold while he was a player. <laughs> right. So this and I is think uh, what's impressive about a Butker's uh, jersey sales is that they he sold out for women. That is the point. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah, women uh, are buying his stuff. Uh, also, you know, there was there's a petition to, to, to get him, him fired, yeah. to have him kicked off the team. The NFL came out really quick to denounce his comments, talking about, you know, the DEI uh, guy in charge. I forgot his name, but he's like, no, we don't stand by those things. I mean, you can go ahead and be a domestic abuser 
and you can, you know, drive your Corvette at 100 miles an hour down regular old streets in Las Vegas and kill somebody. By the way, he also killed her dog. So you need to be upset about that as well. <laughs> so so yeah. this 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 Ruggs character with the with the Raiders driving around Las Vegas drunk and his vet driving 104 miles an hour down a residential road killed somebody. That that doesn't get denounced. But Harrison Buckner, Butker had a commencement speech who encouraged or he didn't even encourage them. He he said, I know many of you are going to be excited about your most right. important vocation being a mother and a wife. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I had a friend on my on a Facebook friend when I posted a, a meme and it was just it basically it, it it juxtaposed Travis Kelsey with 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 Harrison right when he Buckner. pounded the beer. Yeah. And so Brian, I don't know if you I think you might have saw the meme, but it's basically Kelsey is pounds of beer and basically tells everybody to go party. Yeah, and then and then the difference was Harrison Butker said, "Hey, be good humans and like go make families and have babies and and you know, be great Americans." And 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 Travis Kelsey gets praised and he's a media darling. And Harrison Butker's, you know, they're calling for his head, and I just found that to be wild. And it's really a, I think it's just a, a statement on modern society yeah. and um, and priorities and all of those things, right? Another interesting point is. Um, of all the people that have come out and publicly defended him, uh, Ms. Mrs. Hunt, the wife uh, the of way, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I, I'm looking at your post right now. Are you? It, it, it's it's so hard to resist just right now. Yeah, I, I and 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 I'm and, not, and I'm not going to because I'm doing this show. And but. my my friend that 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 you know came on and, and spoke her mind. I respect her greatly. Um, so Danica, uh, I have no idea if you're listening to the show. I doubt you are, but I respect you. Um, she's a really intelligent woman. She's a attorney. She's a former, I think a public defender. And now she's in private practice. So, I mean, she's, she's That's got God's a lot of work right there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, she's, she's, she's an articulate, intelligent, educated, smart person. Right. Um, I wholly disagree with her take. Um, and that's the beauty of America, right? Um, <clears throat> but she came out and she said, "Well, that's not what they're mad about." The the, the meme itself, and I asked her what, and she said, "Well, he right. he, he was right. he was misogynistic and this oh. and that." And I was like, "Misogynistic? What? What did he gross, say? Was... Gross misogyny? Gross misogyny? Yeah. Mm. Toxic masculinity? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And and homophobia? Right. No, and I don't no, even think to... he mentioned." Alphabet. He, he did. So to me, I think, I think I'm surprised that that's not getting more play. Uh, he, I mean, it, it was kind of in jest and it was in passing talking about how women are being deceived the most these right. days. And that, uh, you know, we, and it talks about, you know, not taking pride in the home and not the good kind of, pride, but you know, that's a good kind of pride, not like the pride we're about to go through next month. That's right. He did. He did right. make so, a little jab. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but that's not it, a home. Uh, is that is that does that qualify? Does that meet the standard for homophobia? Uh, what's yeah. the standard for homophobia? Um, well, right. well, he I, he said there it, that it's a, a deadly sin. That that he, term... he, he called Pride Month a deadly sin. So, well, which means he's. I think I'm that's. Gonna a... me... I'm going to so make that... myself very unpopular here. Well, well, that's fine, and I and not that I agree or disagree with him. That's not my point right now, though. Though I agree with him. Is is that uh, he's claiming that the good kind of pride is 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 what we do in our home, and the bad kind of pride, the deadly sin pride, is is all the that's that's all that is. That's a play on words. It is a play that's, on words. That's a and, play on words, and in and my mind, cute. that's a very cute way to say it because yes. you can't argue that pride is one of the deadly sins, right? Like that's right. That's and that's even, not disputable. And, and even if you go in the dictionary and look up the different definitions of pride, like the opening one is, is, you know, somebody who's being overwhelming and mm -hmm. you know, the, the bad kind of pride. Right. And then you, you go down to the next definition talks about like, Hey, I'm so proud of you, son. You <laughs> ran really <laughs> right. fast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, and also he, he was also wrong in, in his, uh, his hate speech line about you can be put in jail for saying that, Jews killed Christ, which is though though there is a bill that's a terrible bill, it was not passed by Congress. That's false. Okay. And and nowhere in the bill says that, that it's that's criminal, right? It just 
you can be fined. It's like a civil thing. So you can't be thrown in jail for saying that 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 Jews killed Christ. And it's also like just a it's an example of what might be anti-Semitic if you and then it, and it goes through the oh, example. I thought, I thought anti-Semitism was good now. Isn't well, it? I mean, well, well not, this, according, to, not this, according to Congress. This, this was the uh, the congressional over over correction of that. Right. Oh, uh, gotcha. we're, we're so anti anti-Semitic. We're going to we're going to outlaw it. We're going <laughs> to. With hate speech. We're, we're going to burn the Constitution to make sure no anti-Semitism happens. Is basically <laughs> what they decided to do. <laughs> we're we're going to go so anti-Semitic, anti-anti-Semitic that we're you know we're going to no more back, rights for anybody. We're going to circle back around to it. Yeah, Brian, you said you were going to be the the you're going to make a lot again unpopular. What were you, what were you going to uh, say? I just words like homophobia transphobia islam just people I, I anytime anybody uses one of those terms in earnest i i immediately just i i have a i have a difficult time respecting their intellect um it's they're they're just they're propaganda words it's just this way of bypassing debate and just slurring you as a bigot um and and it's and it's just it's just a the suggestion that if you disagree with the ideology, like that 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 him saying that is homophobic. He has an irrational fear of homosexuals. Um, that 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 suggestion it's it's just it's idiotic. It's just something people throw out without thinking. Um, when you unpackage what they're saying, it's it's they're not even really saying anything. It's just a reflex. It's just this thought terminating cliche that says. I'm more righteous than you now. Shut up. Um, mm -hmm. I could go on and on and about that. No, I probably I, will at some I point, but I, I think I agree with you. It's um, I don't think I agree. I, I agree with you. It's uh, I, I think we shared another video in our chat, but, and I'll, I'll see if I can find it to link it into the show, but there's this protester out at some rally. I don't know even know who she was protesting against. And she was yelling, he's a fascist. He's a fascist. Oh, yeah. I, I, and the I person with the camera in a, in a mic go, says, you know, why, what is it about him that makes him a fascist? And she's like, well, I don't really know if he really is. And he's like, well, then why are you yelling that? And she's like, because it gets everybody's attention. Yeah, that was a professor. that. And then the guy goes, he, he asks her, questions her a little further. And the woman actually says, I'm not actually even sure what a fascist is. <laughs> I think I, I think I saw that clip. I think that that... <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, that was an actual professor who was saying that. I, I hope, I pray that wasn't a professor. An but actual I won't professor be doesn't know what a what a fascist is. That's... Maybe it was a math professor. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, maybe that's it's not like she better. was calling him a cosine, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> hopefully she would know what that was if she was a math professor. Because <laughs> so I would not be like, I, so you're helping with my credit <laughs> score. I don't know. <laughs> Let me get that Dodge Charger. <laughs> get that Hellcat, yo. Yeah, the scat pack. Uh, I I engaged with one person online about the about the the Kansas City kicker, and it's somebody in my fitness circles, and you know she was upset that he would he would say that. You know she's a professional and a parent, right? Mm -hmm. So so I just asked the question. I'm like, hey, did you did you watch the whole thing in, in context and and what he actually said? Because because I guess she, she said I don't I don't care about your opinion of what your wife does. I was like, well. He actually got emotional over his wife, right? Like, and he, he's like, her. my wife is is yeah, he, he praised, like at the, in the highest level, and he's she's why I can do all these mm -hmm. things, right? Um, and and he started a speech with, "Hey, congratulations, you guys graduated college. That's awesome. And some of you are gonna go be successful. Some of you are gonna get lots of promotions, and you know, some of you are gonna be really excited about you know, with your most important vocation being a, a mother and a and a wife, mm -hmm. which is, which is interesting to me how he phrased that because, because he also talked about himself and his vocation about being a father and a husband. Mm -hmm. And since he's Harrison Bucker, we know that being a husband and a father is not his vocation. We know that he's a kicker for the Kansas city chiefs in the national football mm -hmm. league, but that's not what he was presenting as himself as. Right. So, but, but it also tells me that you can have more than one vocation at a time. 
which means being a mother and a wife and being a professional are not mutually exclusive. They're, you know, you can you can do both, and just one in the context of the world is way more important. That that's it. And yeah, even he, he didn't he didn't yeah. disparage anything. He just no. he just he, upheld certain things that which by the way we kind of need to perpetuate the species what's, what's um, crazy too is is that he said some of you are excited right which means his audience right and they are cheered people who want to be get, they gave him a standing they ovation didn't boo him this. or get up and walk out on him or anything you like know, and that it's a trope like if you go to a jesus school you're there to get married right you know byu is famous for you know get, get your byu bride you know, don't go there you're gonna end up married right right uh especially if you're saving yourself for marriage in the, right. in the, in the, in the, in right. the sexual world. Yeah, um, no, it's, it's, it's a normal thing, right? It's like, you go do this, finish off the stuff you've got to do. And now it's, you're free to get married right. and go do your family right. thing. And, and it, it, what's, what's really crazy is one, um, my, my interaction on the, on, on Facebook with this friend of mine, I, I, I should use friend loosely. She might not consider me a friend any longer. I don't know. Um, <laughs> hey. But she's, she, she's probably not gonna like me. If she she she, this, she, she 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 made it really clear to me that I don't get to tell a woman what is or isn't misogyny. And I was like, no, 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 no. That's not how English works. I said, if you are telling me that, then you then you also can't tell me what is and isn't. And then we we no longer have communication. I'm like, women don't get to just define certain words and men don't get a say in it. Like that's that's taken the whole you know pro-choice thing to a whole night like, so now we can't tell them what is and isn't rape we can't tell a woman what is and isn't misogyny we can't what do we get to, what can we say like i'm like what point do is this whole you mean, hey, you, we can't tell them what is or isn't bad driving when they're behind the wheel we can't mansplain right like you but can't yeah. do anything right so like I, I thought that was really weird um but i really think it's odd that so many people that that admittedly are either atheists or not practicing Catholics or whatever have such an interest have such an interest in what goes on essentially at a church. I mean, it's not church, but it's right. an extension of church, right? A, sure. a, a Catholic school. Yeah. It's... Um, and and to think that you know what was happening in that room was well received. It was on point. It was on brand, <laughs> and and people outside of it want to be offended. And I, I feel like this is textbook narcissism, right? To think that you're so important that you should be able to control and criticize what a group of people say in a, in a closed setting, more or less. Like right. I, I, well, they, they feel it's, it strikes me that any kind of affirmation of, of, of the, of the nuclear family, any kind, like any kind of uh suggestion that it, Hey, it's, it's actually kind of admirable to be a homemaker, to be to be a wife and mother, and to to raise a family. That this is taken as an attack on women. It, that, like this is misogynistic. This is this is an attack on women as a as a group. Um, like that. I think that's worth. Uh, that should frighten us. That that's a, that that's a reflex. Um, anybody who's upset about about this is. I'm sorry, but they're they are they're simply a moral imbecile. That's there's there's no getting around that. Um, like I said, this isn't going to make me popular. Um, but it they're they're a in what way they're a moral imbecile? We I mean we could probably spend a whole series of of podcasts unpackaging that. But specifically, this idea that you know about masculinity and femininity. Um, just our our entire sense of of humanity has just been totally warped by by modern feminism it's it really is pretty scary and and it really is our our civilization is in steep decline because of this i mean we're we are way below replacement level uh birth rates um you know all of our social uh measurements uh crime poverty um out of wedlock birth rates uh you name it these things these things are skyrocketing because of uh because of this toxic idea that is that is yeah. hostile to the family i i uh i had a i had a, a conversation with my pastor the other day we, we went to lunch just a you know hey we haven't sat down and chit chatted in a while let's go have lunch 
So I took him to the barbecue, Dre, that I took you to. When nice. You were in nice. Um, and uh, Brian and I sat down and we were talking and we were talking about the need to have men's active leadership in the church and specifically, you know, men that are available to be leaders for the other groups, not a men's group in the sense of men sitting around just talking to each other in an echo chamber, but like, how do we lead the younger men and how do we mentor them actively, not just by happenstance, right? And how do we get that influence out? And so we were talking about that and he asked me just kind of broadly, what did I think about that? And I said, well, here's the problem, Brian. We're, we're not allowed, to, we, don't, we don't allow men to be leaders in, the, in our society anymore. So how can men lead in a church? If, if men aren't being groomed at home to have leadership qualities because all of men's leadership qualities are tagged as toxic masculinity. Like, Brian, to your point, like, I agree with you. Our society is faltering, and I think it's the lack of leadership. It's the lack of genuine masculinity um that we we basically i think your pastor's on the right track though yeah 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 we've demonized the church the church is how you fix that right and and so you know bringing it back to you know from a bit to a biblical perspective right it's very clear biblically that men were designed to lead and they were designed to be the spiritual head of the household and they were designed to be the you know the leaders of the of the culture and the church and the pastorship right like women aren't supposed to be pastors and we can get into that, um, but it, the Bible's pretty clear on it. And you know, that's always my first clue about a if if I get invited to a church and it's and it's a female pastor, I, I'm yeah, thanks, but yeah. no thanks. Yeah. Um, no, I, I find it interesting that um, that the way we run men's groups. I do want to elaborate on that point, though. But go sure, ahead, sure. I, oh, I, I don't, you want to do now or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I, it, before somebody accuses me of being misogynistic, um, I, I, the Bible is just pretty straightforward and clear that women, women are not authorities in the church. Women can do a lot of ministries. Paul had a, a, a great deal of respect for women. Um, but, uh, he, he, he was pretty clear that women aren't supposed to be leading churches. So if you can't, if you, if you don't take that particular thing seriously, then you're probably not taking the Bible as a whole seriously. No, I agree. Um, you can't, and that's you not can't, even, you can't hand wave that away and say it was in Deuteronomy or something. You're right. It was, it was all throughout Paul's letters. Yeah. It was, you know, it's it was the second to a half Gentile, of the Bible. It was to a Gentile <laughs> yeah. church. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, there, there are a lot of, you know, people lawyer it in a lot of different ways, but that's well, all culture, they're doing. They're lawyering culture was it. different back then, and culture's different now. And it's like, well, then how much of the Bible still applies if the culture drives the Bible? Culture doesn't drive the Bible. The Bible should be driving culture, right? And he and he appealed to universal. He he appealed to Genesis, which which is universal, which is which is sure it originated in that culture. But if you're writing Genesis off as you know the first few chapters of Genesis off is just cultural. Well, you're not a believer anyway, so why it's you don't really have a a part in this discussion. But to believers, if you take the Bible seriously, women should not be pastors. If you if if you if you're confused about that, I, I you... think here's here's the thing that I question. So let's let's <clears throat> let's un, let's unpackage that for a minute because I think this is a good conversation. What does that mean, pastor? Does that mean that a woman can never stand up in front of a congregation and, and give a message for a specific day? Or does it mean they can't design the, the outline of the, you know, what, what it is that the church is going to preach about for the next period of time? Does that mean that a woman can't be the music leader, the worship leader? Does it mean that a woman can't, um, you know, like I, I think that's that's something to unpackage because I, I don't I'm not clear on what those words mean literally or her hermeneutically, um, in um, the sense of of what those passages and what Paul was trying to say. I mean, do you have a thought off the top of your head, Brian, without without reading and quoting it? Um well I want to I look don't. up the Greek. Um okay, you'll see what Strong says, says about it. Oh, uh, he says, I do not permit a woman to teach. Uh, that's first Timothy two twelve. Um, that's a really broad statement. 
Yeah. Uh, Gunaiki de Dedekain. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Dedeskin. Which is which is teach. Um, um I don't. I, basically women shouldn't be leading churches any more than they should be leading households um well, but but leading is different than teaching right that's what i'm trying to get at i, I would because, say teaching is is a is a component of of leading right um but like so obviously in jewish culture rabbis are all men right there are no women rabbis right and and this is a question because i don't know are jewish schools taught by women um it's probably some reformed Judaism schools that are. Um, no, I, I mean traditional. <laughs> I, I don't believe so. Because um, I'm, it, I'm thinking in the U.S. like, like what is it like eighty six high somewhere between 60, 80, 70 percent of all of our teachers are women in the U.S. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a woman's profession. I mean, hell, women lead in higher learning. Period. Like they're all the right. they're the ones that go to college. They're the right. ones that because know, men are doing all the blue collar right. work and all the construction jobs and. I, I, well, and and look, look how that's going for us. Well, that's um, my point. That's what I'm trying to get at. Is I'm wondering if 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 there's some kind of a biblical linkage here that we've kind of missed the boat on. Um, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dre. I, I think that I think that our culture has become feminized, and 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 I say that even even in the church when you when you, when you think about a men's group, right? It's you know, dude sitting around in a circle studying or talking kneecap to kneecap and in, in an intimate setting which is not which is not what men do you know they they stand shoulder to shoulder more than they sit kneecap to kneecap mm -hmm. i mean i just think about the times that my dad you know imparted his wisdom it was either he was driving and i was just sitting in the passenger seat listening to him or i was shining a light while he was fixing the car and i was handing him you know tools or whatever and he would well, get that he light, would teach me that light out of my eyes you're like oh, yeah <laughs> What's wrong with you, boy? That's what it's like, I need to see you right there. But uh, you know, or you know, coaches, you know, they don't they don't sit the team down and and speak for an extended extended period of time. You get on the field and you do things, right? If you're yeah. if you're teaching your son to hunt, you're shoulder to shoulder. You're not you're not kneecap to kneecap. And I think that even and I I think that's why you know for the most part therapy is not really a good thing you know talk therapy for for men is as much as it is for women i think it's a it's a it's a feminine thing i'm not saying that the therapy can't be productive at all i'm just saying that that should just be an aspect of what your therapy is and not the whole thing right it, it's it's interesting to me that that men will when men socialize we we get together to do something let's go hunting let's go golfing let's go or even if it's just sit on the like, couch to watch a football game or something right 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 but it but it's always like kind of that activity women will kind of have an activity just as an and as an excuse to socialize um like it, it'll you know you'll you know if a bunch of guys are going hunting but there's a guy who doesn't like to hunt the women will suggest like, Hey, invite that guy. So he can, he can be part of the group, but that, but the guys are all like, but he doesn't like to hunt. Why would he, why, <laughs> so, why would why, I do that? Why, why would he, he doesn't even want to go. He doesn't like hunting. Right. That um, guy sucks and, at golf and he hates and he, it. He's going to he slow us up. And he probably doesn't want to go hunting because he doesn't right. hunt. Um, right. But for, for women, it, the, the community is the point and the activity is secondary for men. The activity is the point and the community is something that kind of happens as a result of that. Um, and I, I, and it's just, you know, women, men and women have different values and it's not that one is right and one is wrong, yeah. but they have to be, they have to be in balance. Maybe women are right to say, Hey, invite that guy hunting. Cause, uh, but he doesn't like to hunt. Yeah. But he, he needs, he needs men in his life. You for know, sure. Be, I'm not saying women are wrong for any of this. And that's I, why we need women to civilize us. I mean, how many, I don't know how many times I've, you know, I've, I went and go, I saw a dude I haven't seen for a long time, like you guys, right? I come home and, you know, I get the questions like, and you're like, so, I don't know. We didn't talk about that. What about yeah, this? I don't know. We like, didn't what, talk about how, that. How's his, how's his wife doing? How's his kids doing? What are they, what are they doing? And what, what is she doing in life? I'm like, fucking, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you're like, luckily, the barbecue. So we had this right, barbecue, yeah. right? It was really like, luckily, good. Terry's there. So I can talk to her about her goings <laughs> right. on. But I, you know, right. if it, it just, if not, she hadn't been in the room, there, that wouldn't even come up in conversation. Like, yeah. what, what do you guys talk about? I'm like, uh, we tell, you know, war stories, football. I don't know. 
we okay. talked about we so, made a lot of movie references right yes yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so you know we're just we're just different and and to take those differences and whittle them down in church and and do the social aspect of it i i, I think that lots of men's groups need to do more i think i think they need to play basketball yeah i think one of the cool things well, the mormon church has they have a they have a damn basketball hoop in their in their chapel right so yeah. and i also think it's why churches aren't they're not they're not terribly mission oriented i don't mean i don't mean sending out missionaries but i, I mean in terms of the church the yeah. capital c churches overall mission in the world they're not really oriented to that they're yeah. they're oriented to I, i'm reading this book right now called the the great de-churching um that I'll probably talk about more next week. I, I think I think we agreed we're going to talk about apologetics, but maybe maybe I'm getting ahead of the supply Spoil, chain. Spoiler there. alert! Yeah, yeah. Um, stay tuned. But uh, I thought we agreed to that. But that is, I hope I'm not committing you guys to something that you weren't. Uh, anyway, but it's called it's it's very much focused on the community aspect, and it kind of brushes past the 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 mission aspect, but. Um, uh, th just the fact that our churches are so feminized is a big part of the reason they're where Christianity is dying. Um, when I used to lead the uh, the young adults Bible study at the uh, the church I was going to a few years ago, um, before you were unjustly removed and excommunicated, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the one. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Um, you brought it up. I was just clarifying. Okay. Um, it it was one of the things I noticed is is how many people would evaluate the the Bible study afterward on the basis of how many people you know how many people shared. It was about sharing their feelings about the text we were studying, and I'm just like, well, why why is that uh, why is that a measurement? Well, you know, everybody should get to talk. Well, yeah, everybody gets to talk when they want but the idea that the you know the value of the, the the that's not the point of the bible study the point of the bible study is to find out what the text is teaching if they don't have any if somebody doesn't have anything to offer if they don't know what the text is about or they don't have any particular insight or background information like why would why would that be you know why are their feelings on it of of, of such primary importance um yeah yeah. But it like it's I'm yeah. I felt like Clint Eastwood and Grand Torino when you said the feelings. You're like, oh yeah. <laughs> feelings. Yeah. Um you know, which I, I you know, I, I didn't control like, you know, no, you don't get to talk, you don't know anything. I didn't like shoot people down if they they shared their feelings, but we would we would have a lively discussion and we would agree, some people would agree, disagree, and I never kind of lay down the rules for you know, you shut up if you don't have anything that I agree with to contribute. But it was, I realize I kind of sound like a jerk when I talk about that, but I think that's largely because we have these expectations of Bible studies as this sort of women's book group where it's well, about. And, yeah. And I think that was my original point. Uh, and, and it, you know, that's well, why, why are we doing that? And right. if, and, and if women wanted, if that's the way they get, the content out of it in their own setting then fine cool yeah it's it's funny because um when we were having these conversations when I, brian when my pastor and i were having these conversations i was telling him that you know we had had a men's group previously and there was about six seven of us and it was funny because the two guys that put it together their whole idea about the men's group was two parts one sit dre to use your phrase knee to knee and read Bible verses and talk about feelings. And then the other half was to go out and do like manual labor for people that need it. And I'm like, hold up. Like, no, that's not to two, me. Like, two things that suck. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, here's the thing. I was like, and this is, this is my take on, on a men, men in general, right. Is that men are not all the same <clears throat> in the sense of the skills and the tools and the talents that we bring to the table. And I was like, as an example, you want me to show up to do yard work? I'm just going to ask you how much to donate. Like, I don't want to show up to do yard work. I don't even do my own yard work. I'm allergic to grass. I have a yard guy, 
Like, yeah, I don't, and I don't think that's what service and church so, is supposed to be. But I, I know. So, ahead. yeah. So my point was, I was like, now, where can I help? Do we need to go talk to city council about a new zoning issue? Or is there a problem going on in the city that the church wants to get involved in? And you need somebody that can go have a, have a, you know, a, 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 a conversation and we can get something done and I can use influence and I can teach people and I can take some other people with me and we can have these conversations. Do we have young men that need to be like shown the way to like be a professional in their career and how to like maneuver through their world? Maybe we need to be teaching some of these guys and do some marriage counseling and, and, and do some engagement with our young men and help them through some tough times they're having with their, their home lives and their families. Maybe somebody needs to learn how to balance their checkbook. Like there's a lot of, things that's a wisdom factor it's just about having been around a little bit and seen if we know a couple of things we've seen a couple of things kind of deal right it's not always mama man i lift heavy boxes it's like i mean i could pick up heavy stuff but like that's not i'm not here i'm not like labor for hire that's a totally yeah, I don't, different i don't know shit gimmick. about anything just you want me to pick something up i'll do that <laughs> yeah both of those seem like sort of unimaginative stereotypes of right? what's supposed to be happening in yeah. churches and yeah um and it, talk, it it's kind of like a it's like a reverse misogyny right like 100 yeah man exactly must right. do yeah uh, yeah <laughs> Ooh, man and, you know it's that, like that that whole trope like yeah i married this idiot so i you know i put up with him because he's he's dumb and you know awkward and he can open silly. jars when i can't open them and right yeah he does the yard work for anything and keeps else. my car running and takes the trash yeah. out yeah what a, what a great relationship yeah <laughs> so yeah no it was totally but Going back to, you know, the biblical stuff, like it, it's weird to me that, and Brian, I love what you said. I mean, you said it pretty harshly, but I don't disagree with you that, you know, the Bible's pretty clear on gender roles and, and it's odd for people, for an entire group of people that, that proclaim to be, to have focused their life around this belief system, but then to just basically shit all over the social implications of that, of the systems within this, this book, right? It's like, oh yeah, we, we go to church and we say these prayers and we do all these things. Well, do you follow all the social implications? Oh no, it's 2024. <laughs> it's like, yeah. wait, a, wait a minute. Like that, none of that changed. I would do anything for love, but, but I, I won't, won't do, do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it seems like, like pick and choose hypocrisy. Right. Like, you know, we're going to do yeah, all these yeah, things, yeah. but we're not going to let men be in charge, even though God said it in to your point in Genesis, it was reiterated probably every three books um, about how important it is. And then Paul basically capstones it at the end of the Bible um, as he's as he's setting up the church, the gen, to your point, the Gentile churches for success. Um, I, I, I do think that that's true, but that is also cherry picking in in the other way right when you when you put it all together in context and you explain why i mean what is what are the, what do those things mean i mean if you if you go to like first corinthians 16 13 where he's like what is the, what is a man supposed to do right it's mm -hmm. be watchful stand firm in the faith act like men be strong but then in 14 he follows it up with let all of you do that be done in love right so yeah. so now you you know what is it what does it mean to just stand firm is it just like it's my rules my way the highway no you stand firm in righteousness you stand firm on on things that are that are correct you be watchful especially if you're the the leader of your household if there's weird things going on at your children's school you should be you should watch out for that. You should also intervene. If there's crazy content, if your kids are on the internet looking at wild shit they shouldn't be looking at, if you if you watch movies that small children should not be in the room for, you should be watchful of that. And and being strong doesn't just mean physically strong. No. It also means being I don't, resilient. I, think, I don't think he means physically strong. He I don't means, think so either. He means emotionally strong. Like, here's a here's a quick here's a quick anecdotal story that I'll I'll agree with to to go along with that. My daughter was about fourteen, maybe thirteen. She's pretty young, and she asked me to go to some party, and I was just like, no. It it, it, it and uh, and she played. She asked if she could. She asked if she could go to a party. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought. And I, I thought just, she was inviting you to a party. No, 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 she, no, she asked. No. She asked if she could go to a party. 
Gotcha. And, and I was like, no. And her, 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 her justification or her, her second attempt was, well, I forget the girl's name, but so-and-so's mom is letting her go. Well, I knew so-and-so mm. and I knew her mom. Right. And I quickly said to Alyssa, so-and-so's mom is a whore. And Alyssa goes, <laughs> and then she goes, no, you're not wrong. <laughs> and, she, and, 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 and she walked off and, <laughs> and, you know, Carrie kind of did a double take, like, did you really just say that to our, you know, 13, 14 year old daughter? And I'm like, it was the easiest way to communicate what was going on. And Alyssa, you noticed that she got what I said and it was apparently appropriate because she didn't even argue with me. Um, you mean I, you were watchful and you stood firm? I mean, in this case, I was, I'm not going to say I was perfect, right? But I, I definitely, that was, I was, I was correct in that moment for sure. Because by the way, that girl went on to be married to a guy that was in prison with like shit on his face and like meth dealer kind of thing. And and I actually brought that back up to Alyssa a few years later because she was like, check this. And she shows me the picture of the guy and she's like, that's so-and-so's husband. And I mean, oh, so-and-so when I told you about her mom and she was like, you were right. Like I didn't even fight you then. You don't got to rub my face. In. <laughs> yeah, but <you> got it. <laughs> but so there's a book. So where was so and so's father? Oh, they not not in the picture. Shocker. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Nice. Nice redirect, by the way, Brian. <laughs> there's a book um, that I've recommended to all of my my contemporaries that have daughters for kids, and it's called Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters. And shout out. Uh, I'll link it in the, in the show's description today. Um, I found out about it from Dave Ramsey. He recommended it to somebody that called in. And it's written by a clinical psychiatrist woman that specializes in, uh, I'm going to call it at risk, at risk young women. Um, and her entire book is premised that the single factor that she can back into as a common denominator is all of the girls that she deals with did not have strong fathers in their lives. And so she goes on to write this book, basically says that the strength of your daughter will be predicated on how strong her dad is. And by dad, the man that's in her life. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to stay married, right? Like, I mean, obviously that's that's preferred, but the point is even a divorced father can stay engaged in his daughter's life and be a, and be a, a, point, a va- point of value, right? Um, but she goes on, and I'm not going to give the whole book away. I, any, I mean, I, I really recommend it to anybody to read, and it's a short read. Um but she makes this one point, which ties into what you said, Dre. And it says that young women start understanding personal value very early on. And one of the things they ha- they have a need is they need to know that you, the father, will fight for them. And by fight for them, fight with them over what's right and wrong. That somehow psychologically, they need to fight with you because that shows them that you're willing to have a knockdown drag out over what you believe is right. And so it really ties to that verse that you just read about being strong and being vigilant. Like that is a a biological need by little, little girls for their dads to do. So it's wild that, you know, Paul gave us this. You didn't need to read strong fathers, strong daughters. You just needed to read right. Paul. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But spoiler but this, alert, it's but, in the Bible. <laughs> right. But this, but this clinical psychiatrist with years of experience is basically reinforcing that, not knowing that she's reinforcing a biblical because she does she she doesn't make it about religion. She makes it about uh just sociology. But it, it was just a really interesting read. And I've seen it over and over, you know, anecdotally in my circle with, you know family members and friends of mine and, and whatnot. Just a really interesting point. So I, that was really long-winded, but it yeah, just you, it you, played back really well into that. You know, if you if you read any, you know, fantasy novel or watch a movie or hear a good story, like what what makes a good king, right? The especially like a warrior king. Is it is it because he has such a great sword, so he's the greatest warrior? No. It's it's because he's a, a gentleman warrior. So he, he knows when to be gentle. He knows when to heal. He knows how to heal his his community, and he knows when to when to stand up and ring the bell and and, and get busy with his sword. Yeah. Right. So it you know you 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 kind of do have to have those other qualities, which is which is why men should have a good mother, right? So you we learn our you know, compassion you, from them. If yeah. you if you if you grow up without a mother, then you don't have that compassion aside, and all you are is a warrior and not. And not a gentleman, 
not a not a night. I think that's right? a great that's a that's a great point about the balance, right? Um, it's not all about men. It's it's about it's about both. We we made this show kind of the focus on masculinity because of the pop culture references and because we're right. three guys, so it's easy right. to talk about sure. masculinity and femininity. But but let me mansplain masculinity to you, ladies. Right. <laughs> but certainly, um, I made I did in fact. So I had both my kids in the house the other day earlier this morning actually, and uh, Carrie made a joke about something, and she did something, and she goes, "Yeah, you guys, Dad's the favorite." And, you know, but you don't know what I'd do behind the scenes. And I said, Hey guys, you don't know how many times y'all would have died if it wasn't for your mother. <laughs> for, for sure. For so, sure. I mean, this is, you know, the, the whole concept of us having gender roles and us being paired was not, you know, it's not even close to a mistake or happenstance, right? It was divinely created to, to bring this back again to the Bible and, you know, going again to Brian's point, going back to Genesis two or three or whatever, but um, it's, it's, it, it's the balance and it's, it, and it makes it work and it makes it work right. Um, there's some statistic and I'll see if I can find it to the link in the show. Um, and I'm not going to quote the stat cause I don't have it handy, but essentially for young boys to end up in prison, it's like, a, it's less than 50%. I think it's like 20 something percent likelihood of, of being incarcerated. But if they come from a single mother household, that number goes up tremendously and it's like North of 70%. But the funny thing is, is if they're raised by a single father, the number is identical to coming from a, a regular traditional household. And so the, the, it's pretty clear. It's a, the masculinity is the, is the saving grace in this situation. Not the, that's not what's driving them to go become criminals. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's become so no, nouveau and, and, or in vogue rather to, to just, you know, throw out that toxic masculinity as something that just, you know, the, 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 the woman in question doesn't like, that's really all it comes down to what you didn't like it. So you call it toxic masculinity. Um, I don't even know well, if there I, is such I, a I, thing I, as I, real toxic masculinity. I, I, I think there is. I think that if you, if you were, if you were doing it for, for its own sake, uh, for example, you know, I'm being strong and loud only because my children annoy me or only because uh i am i i want quiet right so you're doing things for selfish reasons and whether it's masculinity or femininity well, or just well, humanity well, that was when, you're being, when you're being selfish and you're not and you're not living for others then that shines through so and why can't we just man, call it being toxic though is my point i i, I agree well, I, so, okay I, I do think i do think we should define terms when when you, you guys are talking about balance. Uh, I think when any, if, if masculinity and femininity have, to, they're they're supposed to complement each other. We we men need women, mm -hmm. women need men. But when you when you have, I, I would say that toxic femininity is is one of our biggest problems in in the West right now. It's what's well, destroying the West and the <laughs> church. But it, it's not that I'm not using that in the way that feminists often use the term toxic mascul toxic masculinity. What they mean is that masculinity is in itself toxic in any in any measurement. Um, men, bad, women, good. I, I it's valid to call it toxic when one is is out of balance with the other. And I think our our, our civilization, femininity is is wildly out of balance with masculinity. And and uh and I blame men, I blame men for that. Uh, that only happens if men let it happen. If men, uh, you mean if they weren't watchful and standing firm and being men, yeah. like Paul says, like it, yeah. If, if uh, you know, if a woman is telling you that you're, you need to 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 redefine your masculinity to be more in line to to be more feminine. Well, that you be a man and don't let her tell you what your masculinity is. Um, but we have this, uh, you know, trying to let me let me preface this with, I I women should have the right to vote. I'm not I'm not saying we should repeal the the nineteenth the nineteenth amendment. Yeah, it's the 19th. Um, I, I'm not at all saying that. I want to I want to be clear about that. But women do value different things than what men value, and they tend to they 
they they tend to lean left. They they tend to want the government and 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 the nation to operate the way a family does. Um from each from each according to his ability to each according to his need. That's that's how uh, that is a great ethic for a household. Um that's why the parents provide the food and the shelter and the rules because that's what they have that's what the abilities are and that's why the children don't have when you're born you don't have to contribute much you just need food and as you grow up and you can contribute more you you do more chores you take on more responsibility but you're you're still the child of that household you're still being taken care of Fam from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a great ethic for a household we're trying to run our society that way largely because of because because of the our our pull to the left like all of Europe is committing suicide right now, committing cultural suicide because they want to, they want to, they want the whole world to to operate according to that ethic. So we're we're importing the uh, basically the entire population of the third world into the developed world because we want to we want to be helpful and generous, or at least that's how it's sold. But we're turning into the third world. I mean, Europe is no longer a European anymore. Um, we 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 also you know people those are those are exploitable characteristics so if i'm a bad guy and all i want to do is just freeload off you know a community and and their whole thing is is that then i can i can find the loopholes in that and go go take from them or be violent or or do things that it that probably wouldn't wouldn't work well but they won't be able to defend themselves you know why because they don't have enough men being watchful standing firm and and being men <laughs> paul thanks I, I i've got a funny point that just as we're talking about this what is the antonym and it's an antonym might not be the correct answer because but what is the counter to a misogynist a misinterest yeah how many people know that word even exists or how often is that word used um I think I, I think I saw it on Twitter the other day, but well, I have seen it a couple of times recently. I think Matt now, Walsh used it now, the other day. It, well, Matt Walsh, <laughs> so, I can understand right. Matt Walsh using because yeah. he's trying to be clinical. I mean, there's the word misanthrope, right? Which I've heard, which means you just hate people, sure. Which is you know, who doesn't? But right, but 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 the point is, is that misogyny and the word misogynist gets thrown around like gaslighting and toxic masculinity and all of the other catchphrases whereas misinterest is well, never if used you, if you but. view the world through the oppressor and the oppressed then the power imbalance of misogyny compared to misogyny is that the word uh, Mis mis misandry mis misandering. misandry with a d yeah. misandry <laughs> so i mean what what power does that hold? it's like being a racist right you can't you can't be the oppressed my, my, and my, be a racist my point is 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 if one was to just look at social media and the amount of you know angry people that are out protesting methinks you would see a lot more angry white women that hate men than you see a bunch of angry dudes out trying to stop women see, from having lives and doing things my, my point about, is talk about rather be with a bear Jeez. Right. I mean, so going back to that thing, we haven't even touched right. on the 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 well, stupid bear question. But yeah, I mean, Miss Sandry is a respectable political position. In fact, it's it's the default right. position, which is and what I was. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't take that position, well, you're basically a misogynist. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which, yeah. Which is I've I've long I have long observed that feminism is a parasite upon chivalry. It's called once equity, it, Brian. Once it kills its host, it <laughs> dies. You guys have seen that video. I think we've talked about it of the, uh, it, it, was, it was going around a few years. It was this little like 90 pound uh, sorority girl who was in this bar just kind of, oh yeah, bowing up and, and, and all animated getting in the face of this like 250 pound dude, bro. He's a big old um, Russian, if I'm not mistaken. I think they were Russian. And she uh, she Not made wise. contact one time too many, and he just kind of just kind of knocked her back, and you could see that he just like 
she, you know, she falls back on her butt and you can see that he just knocked the feminism out of her. Like, <laughs> um, like her, her just, just, you can see in her eyes, her entire universe just changed. Like she's, <laughs> she, she's reviewing her life and re and <laughs> thinking of, of all the times she's done that to some guy just like that and thought that she was actually like physically intimidating him, but really he was just tolerating her and, her whole life was a lie. She like you could just see that in her eyes, and I think that's a, the perfect picture of of the ideological struggle. Um, it, when when women are complaining about something, it's it's chivalrous for men. You know, if if a man and a woman are walking down the walking down a path and there's a a mud puddle, chivalry demands that he, he cast his cloak across the puddle so she can trot across across unsoiled. Never mind that it ruins his cloak. Um, that's what you're, that's what men are supposed to do. That's what chivalry says. You, you, you bear you, you, you take suffering upon yourself so that women don't have to, and that's 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 your honor as a man to do um, because you're strong, because you're the protector, because you, because you love her and honor her, and she's worth honoring. That's what that's what you provide, and she what she provides is loving and, and respecting you for it and so that, that's that's how it's built so when women are complaining about something you don't chivalry doesn't say hey shut up quit whining it's not that bad right it's not right. that's not that's not a legitimate complaint um no you listen to it you want to, you try to solve the problem so when 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 women complain about well, there's your like, problem you why are you solving the problem just listen brian jeez <laughs> so when women complain about things like the gender pay gap which doesn't exist um the, the you know rape culture um all the other nonsense that that women complain about and chalk up to the patriarchy we're geared to kind of like you know yes dear you're absolutely right um and so it goes on but it's but it's a parasite upon chivalry they demand to be treated on equal terms but equal terms means not not listening to their complaints anymore um Is it have you guys ever read the the actual laws of chivalry? I was using I think I did the colloquial thirty years sense. ago. No, I yeah, I know. Yeah. So so there's there's like there's ten commandments of chivalry that were printed in a in a, in a book of chivalry, and uh, in those ten commandments, I'm not going to read them all, but one of them is uh, basically eight of them are about warfare and how to you well, know yeah. two two are about the church seven. Yay, Black hey, Hall. party. Um, <laughs> two were two were about the church. You have to defend the church and believe the church. And then basically you have to be a, a patriot and you have to never back away from a fight. You have to kill all uh, infidels and then be generous. That's pretty much the laws of chivalry. <laughs> well, yeah, the, technically chivalry was invented by clergy to to stop. To control knights. Yeah, knight, knights were just roaming around, like you know, plundering and pillaging and raping, and and so they decide. So the the clergy try to impress upon them that no, you're not, you're really not a good knight for doing that. You should, um, you know, try to be better. And uh, but it turned, you know, it in pop culture, it kind of morphed into the whole yeah. No, into, I know into gender relations. I, I was I was just having fun with it because. It's all about like being a a, a, a hyper nationalist and a and a, a, a you know a, a Christian nationalist sounds like a hyper Christian nationalist. That's what, yeah. that's what that sounds like. That that that, that you know, old days. You know, with leaning towards uh uh you know going into foreign lands and waging right. war and whatnot. We we you know you know you you bring up you know we're supposed to be protectors. So I think I think the young and the strong and if you. If you protect your your country because because you love her, you are also protecting everything that's it's in it, right? Like we went to foreign wars, and in a lot of the things I did to you know put my family at ease was like I'm going over there so that shit doesn't come to you. Yeah, right. We just had a big terror attack in America, and and we want to take the fight to them, and that's and that's where we're going. And because I'm young and I'm strong and I'm capable, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back on my shield and. You know, and, and yeah, I, or or with it, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that part. Yeah, you want to carry so, <laughs> it. You want to be I, I, okay, with it, not not on it. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't be telling the story. 
right yeah so, it's, right so it, it is funny that you you brought it back to medieval chivalry which was developed out of the crusades which happened because of islamic invasion into europe which went on for centuries until we decided we've had enough of that um this is we was about to we as in Western culture. We, we we as in the Christian West, <laughs> of which I of which I proudly consider myself. Um, but um, but now that we've 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 jettisoned a lot of our our Western values, um, I mean it. I can see the. I mean the Crusaders are rolling over in their graves, seeing that they've invited all the invaders in, and they're taking they're taking over. Um, because they they embrace this toxic feminine idea of uh treating the the whole world like one big family and uh refuse to believe anything bad about islam or muslim culture and uh now the west is teetering on collapse and and if you don't if you don't have a purpose then it's really tough i mean if your if your purpose is just nebulous and you know just be kind, without without a driving force or factor or why, then then what are you even doing? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, this is a uh, Proverbs, this one twenty four, ten. If you falter in a time of trouble, how small is your strength? So that's another thing about just being resilient, right? Like. If things are hard, and that's why people quit stuff, that's why people stop going to things because because it's hard, and I don't I don't want to do hard things. This is why lots of young people don't want to go to work because it's it's hard. Then you know how can you consider yourself strong if you if you just quit every time something gets something gets tough, and if, if you can't fight through adversity, and then because we can't fight through adversity, we have you know more therapy, and and it's weird that we have so much therapy. And more suicide at the same time, so something's something's not working, right? So maybe maybe the maybe the aim of therapy should be driving to someone to toward a purpose, <laughs> driving someone toward a purpose, yeah, driving someone toward a reason to to be tough. Like if it wasn't for my family and my country and my and my surroundings and my friends and my my relationships, it's not about me. Like I I can take care of myself, right? Then what? And, but then so what you know and that's and i think yeah. that's one of the one of the one of the problems with the whole man woman role right the the woman's caring about you all the time and if and if you're just being angry and loud and masculine for its own sake and not for their sake then then you're not doing it right so you, you just said something dre and brian i don't want this to come across the wrong way as an attack on you but like i don't know if i could take care of myself if i didn't have my wife and my family like I, I like a lot of my existence simply exists because I have that reason. One hundred percent. You know what I mean? And 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 I, I don't. I don't feel attacked. And I no, think that's, I'm, that's you're right. as some as as a bachelor with no wife or family to take care yeah. of. But that's a that's a that is one hundred percent a valid point. Yeah. I gotta it, like it, a. It, there's a lot of times the only reason. Like I, for those that don't know, I used to travel a lot uh, for my job and it's, it's a grind and, you know, working long hours and doing all those things, but I only did it for my family. I don't even know if I would be employed if I didn't live my family. <laughs> like I'm being really serious. Like I could be one of those dudes living in a van down by the river. I, like, I don't know because. In it's... fact, I, I often fantasize myself doing that, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's like I got but, extra bedrooms, guys. Yeah, like, what's, that, <laughs> what's that? Uh, that com that comedian. This like, uh, you know, girls want to go on vacation. Guys are like, go on vacation. <laughs> like, I I'm not trying to cheat on you, but man, I would I sure would love to lay, lay on the left side of the bed once. That'd be great. <laughs> you know, or, or just watch whatever the fuck I want to watch. You know, for for ten minutes, and then come back and then you know renew my purpose. Yeah, it, it's 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 crazy because you know I've I've been married now longer than I wasn't in my right. life, right? Dre, you and I are in the same place. And uh and I don't know like how I don't know how or what drives uh, so Brian, I mean like without turning this into a depression conversation, uh, like like cuz clearly, you know, having that drive is different, 
like I don't know. It's it, it it's weird. I don't. I just don't know. I don't know how. I don't know what motivates a, a single person. Like, is it just like the idea of you know, maybe tomorrow's the day or like? Uh, that's a part of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I I haven't. You know, I it. I, of course, I, saying it out loud, I realize how silly and foolish it sounds. I'm 48 years old. It's probably, uh, I, I'm probably past my sell by date, but. Um, but no, but you're, I, I, you're I, that sweet spot you were talking about, about your chocolate milk. Hey, sure. I just saw the golden <laughs> bachelor on, you know, by the way, you know, Matt, you, you do, uh, know who Joan Vassos is, right? Yeah. 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 She's the golden bachelorette coming up next. Awesome. So it's been an, an, yeah, cause she had to leave early because of the family. I don't problem. know if I can announce that or not. Maybe, maybe I cut that. I don't know. <laughs> you want me to cut that? I, I can say it. We can we're say good. it. It's been okay. announced. We're good. We're, yeah. cleared. we're cleared hot. <laughs> We're clear, clear not, uh, but uh, um, yeah, but yeah, look, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't normally want to bore people with my my inner life and you know the 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 struggles of a forty eight year old bachelor, but uh, since since that's the topic we're talking about, I guess I guess this is a it's, I guess it's, it's relevant, pertinent. it's germane, but, um, if you will. But yeah, I uh, you know I my. My parents were divorced. Uh, I had my mom left when I was three, and my dad remarried a couple of times. So I have kind of a, I have kind of a, you know, a, a mixed view of marriage. I don't even know if I'm capable of, of doing that. Um, I don't, I don't know that I've got the, the, the psychological equipment for it, or if it would have just been another, you know, series of of train wrecks like I grew up under. But. Um, but yeah, just the, you know, what, what is my purpose in life? Um, that's a question I find myself asking more and more as I, as I get older and, um, you know, I don't have a family. Um, that's probably why I, I spend so much time thinking about the, the state of the church and the state of civilization. Cause I don't, which, is, which is kind of ironic because I have less of a stake in it than you guys do. Um, I mean, I care about my nieces and nephews and I care about my country and, and you guys as kids. Um, but I don't, you know, to my best knowledge, I don't have my own who are going to have to worry about any of these, any of these problems, but nice um, caveat. Yeah. Um, he was in but, Thailand. So yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I was a, a pretty devout Christian by the time I was in Thailand. So I don't, hey, you don't I'm, have to explain it to I, me, man. I can, <laughs> I, I can, I can promise there aren't little any little Thai me's running around. Um, they wouldn't be little now. They'd, that's they'd true. They'd be grown they'd be ass grown. adults. That's, that that they, almost sounds racist. Thai me's. I think we are Thai me's, if you please. We're Thai me's, if you don't it's, please. It's not. They would be Thais, <laughs> and they it would be me, like half me. But, but, uh, but no, there are, there are no that little, little Western nose. Here. You'll. St- half breed son of a bitch but yeah i probably that probably gives me more time to think about these these bigger issues um and i i kind of wonder if sometimes that wasn't why god didn't bring me a wife um no you're going to think about this stuff and when the and the when when the when the kingdom arrives then you then you get your wife and kids um which uh is not a it, it's that's not a widely held view that that's going to happen after the resurrection, but that's a bad reading of scripture as we've discussed before on the show. But, um, but yeah, so it's, uh, which of course, you know, I think about that, but then I think, well, you know, do you just have delusions of grandeur that you're, you think that you're going to have any effect on the course of history and the state of the church? Um, aren't you just coping for the fact that you don't have a wife and kids? Yeah, all of this stuff occurs to me. Um, but uh I, I didn't mean to make it that deep, by the way. So my, my yeah. bad. I mean, but well, but I but I think that I think that's I think that's a, a relevant question. Yeah. Um and maybe you know, maybe I am maybe it is a delusion of grandeur that I'm I'm entertaining to cope with the fact that I'm a 48-year-old bachelor. That's a totally fair thing to think. Um and if that's what you think, then that's a cautionary tale. Um, it just, it, you know, yeah. it, to, and I think I'm in a far better position than, than a woman in my, who is grown up being told that you're, that you're, you're going to find fulfillment in a career 
and to to pursue that instead of a family or at the expense of family because there are there are a lot of women many of whom i i know who who bought that and they're in my position and uh you know they're 48 a little old to have kids if you're a woman um you know this is your future if you don't you know if you don't rethink the that lie that we've been told um and it really is a, it's it's a satanic lie it and like i i truly believe like we always try to tie it back to the divine council worldview um we are the church humanity itself with the church as God's instrument of salvation is at war with dark forces bent on our destruction. Um, the enemy has lied to us and set men and women against each other, turned gender relations into a war between humanity. When men and women are supposed to, we're supposed to help each other. Women are supposed to be the helpmate suitable to the man. Um, but it's it's turned antagonistic instead of complementary, and yeah. that's I think that's just... I think that's a really good summation right there about the the antagonistic relationship between us rather than it being, you know, a natural synergy, right? Because that's really yeah. what it was supposed to be and what it we should have, be. We have this neo Marxist idea that men and women are in competition. Um, competition for what the the pile of crap that's going to be left because 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 we haven't built our civilization it's it we shouldn't be competing we should be cooperating and uh, like everybody that that's and that's so basic to reality that it it's weird that you have to say that that it would even sound novel but it right. really is kind of novel these days so yeah. but I, I mean yeah i i don't even i don't even know if a especially being in like a combat zone right part of the you work long hours and you're tired and you're hot and the you're only so reason hot. i the only reason i get out of the rack is because i don't want to let people down like that's sometimes that's just it it's you know out of a sense of duty and the same thing with you know going to work in the morning with my you know my when my kids were small like it's a sense of duty. Like I, I can't let these people mm -hmm. down. Yeah. You know, my wife and I made a decision a long time ago that you know I work and she's gonna she's gonna be a mother. Yeah. And that was that was and and that's not to say she's not capable of working. She's owned her own businesses. She's right. done her. She's a, as our 100%. kids have grown. Um. Even even made a decision when we didn't have enough money. Right. Where where we had to get another job. And instead of her getting a job, it was me taking on a second job. You know, was, so yeah. that. So that the most important resource that we have in our home, our children, would would benefit that. Yeah. No, I. I Looking yeah. back, did it work? I don't know. <laughs> you know sure, sure, it did. I sure think yeah. it did. I think it did. Yeah. Okay. No, I yeah. mean, Dre, Dre. I mean, we're we're not dis dissimilar in that regard, right? We, Carrie and I did right. the same thing um, when we had our second and our last, and you know, she kind of came to me and was like, "I don't want to go back to work," and I was like. Man, that's because, you know, when she and I, when we first got together, I had told her, like, my goal was that she not work. And her initial sure. response was, I've always worked since I was 16 and I'll always work. And I was like, okay. So fast forward and she's like, I don't want to go back to work. And I'm like, okay, well, how do we figure this out now? Because our incomes are, you know, we're set sure. up on a two income lifestyle. And so we had to make adjustments and we did. And like, I, going back to, you know, the start of the show and, uh, um, the commencement speech that we were talking about, like I, 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 I mirror so many of the things that he said, my ability, I mentioned, I traveled a lot. Um, you know, my ability to travel and to move about the world and to do the things that I did in my professional life were all because I knew that my household was locked down, right. That I knew Carrie had, the kids under control and she could get a list at a volleyball practice and take Austin to class. And she was going to PTA meetings and, you know, volunteering with teachers at school and making copies for them and stuff, right? Like all of that stuff she was able to do so that I didn't have to worry about that stuff. I don't know how dual professional households that travel. Like I've, I've known people oh, where both the man and the woman are traveling and they're having to like juggle their flights to make sure one of them is back in order to be in time to, and I'm like, Oh my God, it's hard enough just doing it as one person I, yeah, coming and I, going and, and, and doing it. And whatever. the thing is by, 
by doubling the workforce, by integrating women into the workforce, we've we've basically uh, we've cut wages in half. Mm -hmm. You know, ima imagine if the if the supply of of workforce was half of what it is, how much higher wages would yeah. be. And so yeah. now now we've you know you, because you, you sound like that theory. Uh, you know, once once you go past twenty years in the Marine Corps, you're working for half the pay. <laughs> Well, you know, and, so but by and, committing as a civilization to this ideology, like it, we've made it so that it's nearly impossible to like it's not even an option for for a lot of people to to have a high quality of life that that you're that our our parents and grandparents could could have taken for granted. Um, on I'm actually income. I'm actually going to push back on that. Okay. So I've done a little bit of research on this and I've ha I've had this conversation with a lot of people about, you know, cost of living increases and this and that, right? And the outlier that continues to come up is housing costs. Well, here's the problem with the housing costs. So if you look at, you know, you do like the cost of living increases and GDP increases and whatever from like starting the 50s. And, you know, milk, gas, automobiles, they kind of trace. And there's, you know, there's some normalization in that but the charts are they, they chart pretty closely together and the one that's out of whack is housing costs but it's not the average cost of a house they're looking at the wrong metric because the average cost of a house is not considering and it's not accounting for the average square footage of a house because in the 1950s people raised a family of four in a 900 square foot home like people um, won't even rent an apartment today that's under 900 square feet. You know, you know a, a trend also. So we, you talk about the the cost of living and the cost of stuff. There's there's three facets of life that I've noticed that have gone way up. Right, housing, medical. Mm, medical is a good one. That one's different. and and school, all and which in, yeah, which which is interesting because all three of those things. We're starting to be heavily subsidized by government. Yep. So once the government started sticking their paws Fannie into that Mae, stuff, Fannie Mae, Fannie Mac, all of it went up while everything else stabilized. Yep. So what does that tell you about, you know? Yeah. Well, I could go on a rant about the, college the costs system. and, and yeah. those guaranteed <laughs> loans. That's a separate. That's we could do a whole TED talk right. on that one. Right. But, but just the housing cost. If you were to if you were to normalize on price per square foot of homes. And I recommend to anybody out there that's listening to me that doesn't believe me, go do that math real fast because I've done it and it tracks the cost per square not, not foot. Not in San Diego, but. <laughs> no, but it will trace within San Diego, I'm saying. Like you've got to normalize for cities because San Diego is right. not fair to more Oklahoma, obviously. Right. right? Well, yeah. But if you do a national average and you do price per square foot of a home from the fifties until now, they're going to stay the same. It's, so it's, that, our... it's that the average home today is 3,000 square feet, 3,500 square feet. People, you've got 20 year olds that think they need to be in a 3,000 square foot home. And I'm telling you, my dad, Mike Moore's listening right now and he's nodding his head because he's living in the house that my grandparents raised him and his two sisters in. And I think the house was originally 750 or 800 square feet. They added onto it at one point. It was a tiny little house. So are, are you saying that a single income family today could live could live on the same with the same quality of life they had 40 50 years yeah, ago yeah I, I believe that in my heart of hearts if they had mm. one automobile that they didn't take a freaking loan out on because people didn't take loans out to buy cars back then they paid mm. cash for cars they saved up and they bought a cash car and then they bought their house on a 30-year fixed mortgage that was within their means in a in a neighborhood that they could afford and they dealt with it. They didn't say, well, I'm not living in that neighborhood. I want my kids to go to that good school over there where all the rich kids are. So I'm going to go buy a $4,000 McMansion. That's okay. well, my, that's my, my point. But my main point still, ima okay, imagine all of that's the same, but now the workforce is cut in half. Oh yeah, no, your they, point now that's valid to... also. Like I think the two the two feed off of each other for sure. But I, I'm just saying that I, I I think that the idea of being able to live off a of single income is is where people fall apart is they're doing it based on working at McDonald's. 
And no, right. nobody was raising a family working at McDonald's, right? I mean, we did they, a single income for ever. Right. right? So but I was held, highly subsidized by the government, sucking off the government teeth. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a pensioner. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But, I, but, but, but the purpose, man, I mean, I, my second and third time to Iraq, I noticed people struggling with communicating at home. Right. Because their shit was not in order. Right. I did not have that problem. Right. Right. Like, I, I think, you know, sometimes I would, you know, due, due to my MOS, I, I had lines back home I could call. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, I had to get a little earful of venting with your son today, you know, and then I'm like, you know, I got like 10 minutes to talk to you, but that's, that's cool. I'm glad you got that off your chest. I love you. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, but, um, but yeah, that what a what an ease burden that mm -hmm. I can just focus on what it is that I was doing. Well, because I was I'm blessed enough to have chosen a lady who also had a purpose, who also had a sense of duty to do her thing at home, and I I, I can't even I, I can't even express into words how you know how grateful I am for for that for sure. Yeah, no, for sure that's. That's the that's the give and take, the yin and yang, right? Of of the situation is that the balance to masculinity is femininity. And that's and, how, and I think that's it, how it works. I think it makes it easy because you, you see on, you know, TikTok or you know, the reels where, you know, a, a woman will say, Hey, I'm not I'm not doing these chores. He's a grown ass man. He can do his own laundry, he can cook his own food, he can do his own dishes. But then that that kind of like goes into kind of scorekeeping on you know what I what do I bring to the table and then and then how do you how do you adjudicate the score at the end of the day and I think Who's that winning? if you kind of you know like well you know if it wasn't for me you wouldn't have that and if it wasn't mm -hmm. for me your son would be in jail if it wasn't for me you know like where if you just live a sacrificial life you're not keeping score you're doing things because you're doing them right like of course it'd be nice for me to you know you know make my wife something to eat or take her out or you know that's it's kind of why I, I always drive right like it's it's like my sense of duty i'm i'm doing this thing and i'm protecting her even if it's just making sure the car doesn't fly off the side of the cliff um just the simple stuff like that and if you're not keeping score at home then then you're just doing things out of the goodness of sacrifice you're not doing them for its for their own sake you know then you're not doing it selfishly at a higher level at a simpler level not a not a relationship level but like you know when it when i'm in my friend circles my brothers my friends whatever and we go out mm -hmm. and do something and you know it's the bill comes in circles that i run in we don't keep score on who grabbed the last bill and who owes what right. on the tab, right? It's like, hey, let me get let me just get this one, guys. It's just easier if I just throw my card on the table. And then, you know, at some point, next time somebody else throws their card on the table, right? Or somebody says, Hey, I'm gonna Venmo you 50 bucks. I saw how much right. that was. I don't want it you to make me feel better. better. <laughs> right. right. But like that's 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 just living. Right. Like that's maybe that goes back to the chivalry of being, you know, being um, I was looking when I was looking at the the laws of chivalry. Right. Just being generous and give largesse to everyone. Not entirely sure what largesse is, but I think that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, generosity. Just... I know. I was just trying to be funny with a weird word. Um, <laughs> but like that's kind of the point of relationships in general. Right. Is just like if you if you do things because it's the right thing to do. And it comes back around when you're with the right people. And if it, if it isn't coming back around, then it's the people that aren't the right people. And then that's just think that's when you got to pick your head up and go, wait a minute, I've grabbed like six tabs from this guy and he's never picked up a tab. It's These like, are not my people. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, right. or, or, or he's right, really Matt. struggling. Right. And uh, it's, it's on me next time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I, I we have such a dim very loud and clear <laughs> view of humanity though like i mean just just recently the governor of south dakota wrote in a memoir that she she smoke checked her dog that's a really right? weird thing to write in a book it, it, but but people were outraged <laughs> that has but been people, but there's also a thing in the in the news where a woman 
poison their fucking husband with with bleach in his coffee and no one's outraged about that right right as a matter of fact she didn't even go to prison she's she has probation right or or recently you know what this sucks because i'm a fan of planet of the apes and uh they did an interview with the with the two like what where are you going with this apropos to nothing yeah <laughs> yes uh -huh. Uh, the the two cast members. So one plays a human, the other plays a chimpanzee, and they both said in the interview, "I'm Team Ape." Really? She's like, she's like, you know, of course, in the film, I'm the human, and you know, I'm Team Human on the show, but but Freya, that's her real name. She's like, definitely Team Ape. And when the interview asked her why, why are you Team Ape, she said, because look at the planet. As if the planet need we, as we for its own a, sake. For we its should, own we sake, we should do an episode on that. I I think so too. Like we, you, the planet's for us. Because of that, course, we take care of the planet because we want to preserve our own self. Because that is a that's a religious shift. That like that's that there are there are philosophical assumptions to that view that I don't think I don't think those actors have thought through. And there's um, lots of lots of people, you know. I like dogs way more than humans. Fucking hate yeah, well, people. Yeah. I I I. Mm. <laughs> you know, it, would you shoot I, a dog before a person though? It depends on the person. It, it depends on what they did, right? Um. Yeah. I mean, so if a dog attacked you, would you kill it? Um. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Okay. But... Good. Because some people would not. But if a man attacked you, you definitely would. Well, it goes back to that choosing the bear over the man and all that kind right. of stuff. To be honest, Even, I, I, yeah. I might let a man live if he attacked me, but I don't think I would. But but I do like dogs better than humans, generally speaking. But but I recognize that's. I think they like you more. That's why. That's what nobody likes you, Brian. I, that's what, I was about to actually say that, like <laughs> yeah, just because. And my mother just disagreed with me right I now. Mean, I see you. I hear you. I thank, see you, Linda. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Jerk. I hear you guys are pen pals now. Yeah, yeah, we've been, so, we've been so, writing a but little bit. That goes back to, Dre, you made the comment about the NFL player that had a car incident and killed a person. If we go, if we were to rewind back to the uh, late 90s, to the Michael Vick situation, hmm. right? So, so Michael Vick was an NFL quarterback, and he was arrested and convicted on a bunch of stuff. But what came out in the media was that it was because of him killing dogs. A little more background, he was in a pit bull dog fighting circle, and pit bull fighters tend to have a more um, utilitarian view of their animals. I'll leave it at that. And so, you know, they'll they'll kill them for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, it's stock. never, it, yeah, it's stock. It's it's kind of like kind of like the 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 congressman or the governor shooting her dog. So when Vic got out of prison, it was a really big deal, and it was all about him having killed these dogs the exact same season that he was making his return to the nfl there was a wide receiver from new orleans that had killed a human being in a dui accident and he was just getting out of jail and he was returning to the nfl but the nfl had to I do a massive a, the ma a massive media push to make vic okay and they just ignored the guy that killed a human in a dui accident and I, 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 I can defend I, that. I, I found that, that disgusting on a whole bunch of levels. One, DUI is egregious to begin with. Black bowl. Oh, that way, not this way, is egregious. Yeah, boom. It's a bad thing, right? You put the world at risk. The worst possible thing happened when you did that, and you killed an innocent human being. And everybody's like, eh, but that guy killed dogs. Like, like, I can cut, like, just to... Yes, I I agree that if we were a saner, more healthy society, we would we would take the DUI more seriously. But the DUI was in it was I'm presuming inadvertent. It doesn't excuse it, but they he didn't get in his car and decide to go kill somebody that day. Yeah, I'm sure it was homicide. You know, reckless hom reckless homicide, murder three right. or whatever. It wasn't a murder one case. My, Michael Vick with with you know cold blooded malice aforethought treated dog you know he he subjected what humans regard as companions and friends and you know pets who trust us and look to us for protection 
um, treated them, basically brutalized them and killed them when they didn't yeah. serve his purposes. I mean, I think I, 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 I would probably... The person who killed the other person in the DUI, I could, pro I could prop, I could possibly like be friends with that person before I would be friends with Michael Vick. Um, well, so first of all, without you knowing a lot about the incident, you you yeah. used a lot of very yeah. human emotional words that he brutalized. Yeah, I, yeah. that wasn't. I, I I don't have that opinion of what he did. Now I'm not just I'm not defending him, well, right? Know, like, but it was a very purposeful clinical drowning. That is how he killed. Well, him. no, I'm no talking hang on, about, hang on. I'm hang talking on, about but, dog fighting as a sport, though. But that's separate from the from the death, right? Like the dog fighting people that dog fight. Now that we're going to go off on a weird tangent, let me think about <laughs> this for a second. People that dog fight have a belief that the dogs enjoy the fighting because they have a natural inclination to do it. I'm not justifying that or condoning it. I'm just telling you their mindset, right? So they don't see the dog fighting itself as bad. They see it the same as putting two MMA fighters in the ring or putting two boxers in a ring. They they choose to do it. If you put or the two, two football players on a field. If you put two game bred pit bulls within visual sight of one another, they will choose to fight. It's not like they're being they're not it's not like you're putting a black widow in a tarantula sure. in, a, in a jar and shaking it to cause them to fight. Uh, sure, okay. but you're still taking the dog to the situation I agree. so that he's I, so that he's going to get shredded by the But other again, dog. that's like saying I took Ronda Rousey to go get a concussion from It's it's not from, though cuz Ronda Rousey has agency and the dog doesn't. I, I agreed. I'm just simple. I'm 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 explaining the mindset of the other yeah, side of it, right? I, and I I don't I don't I don't think I. Uh, it's it's I a think, whole different conversation. Some, somebody who has that mindset is is an idiot, or they're lying to themselves. Um, so, or they're not compatible with you, right? Sure. Yeah. And, and for the record, I've never dog fought nor been at a dog fight. So I don't want there to be any like, man, it sounds like he knows a lot about this. For anybody that's listening for the first time, I'm, I've am i been a canine trainer for the better part of 20 years, 25 actually. And when you're in dog circles, you get to know a lot of dog people. So you get to know a lot of people in ancillary and peripheral peripheral dog sports and dog events. And you know, you, you hear and learn things. Just to be clear. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but you no, know, running back, you know, punched his fiance in the face and drove her through an elevator and he got to play again. Right. He punched her more than once too, didn't he? he well, he stood over her like like he just laid out a middle linebacker. Mm -hmm. Like he was he was angry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's toxic masculinity. That's or even uh thing. or even you your your that. boy at the University of Oklahoma, right, who went on to be an NFL Nixon. star. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I mean, you know, he he punched her hard, mm -hmm. hard. Yep. yep. I know, think and he and he got to get drafted. Like he yeah. slipped a couple of rounds. Okay. Yeah, he slipped a couple of rounds. I think there's a difference there in in age, right? He was sure. a child. He was a child, theoretically. What you know, whatever. But again, not defending it by any stretch. I would never defend any level of domestic violence, but. Um, it definitely happens and the NFL tends to have a, a higher view of domestic violence to your point than they do of, yeah. but of it's also, behaviors. it's also a violent, brutal sport. Like you kind of, you kind of like that in them, right? Like not that, but you know, the mentality of, I mean, of, you have to wonder aggression. You have to, you, you, have to, you have to wonder where the line is, right? Yeah. And like Colin Cowherd talking about his, uh, his backward hat. He's like, you know what? If a, if a cornerback is a little goofy, he can do that. If uh, if a linebacker is a little unhinged, I kind of like that in him. I kind of want him reckless out there. But a, but a quarterback, he needs to be a little more buttoned up. Right. The head coach of an NBA team, you can't wear your hat backwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I I think we solved it. I think we solved masculinity. We absolutely solved it. We solved By it. the way, it's I funny. Had, I had Talk high hopes and. Uh... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was I was just gonna say we we're talking about uh feedback earlier when we were off camera. One of the one of the things my brother John uh gave me his feedback is it drives him crazy when we when we say what you just said. He's like, You didn't solve anything. He's like, You got more things you need to know about. Which is which is <laughs> which is why we say it actually. I, I, I know, it's so actually the point. It just made me think of it when you just said it because I just heard John just 
do this while he's driving down the road again. Um, John, we're being sarcastical. We don't think we solved it, <laughs> except for this time, we, uh, which we what, which what we did service. was we gave our take, right? And uh, and I think it, I think it's run its course. It that's has. that's what we that's what we say when we we solved yep. we solved we, amongst us three. Maybe you don't given, agree. You listening? We, we've <laughs> given our we've given our take, and we've rendered all further conversation about this in society moot <laughs> <laughs> because we solved it that is my it's word a, and as such it is beyond contestation what's the what's the uh uh what when when people argue about a, a, a human right or something it's been it's already been uh a, abortion they say it's a lot of the you know roe v wade was what's the, what's settled. the term settled. settled yeah it was it settled was, science it, the law of the land it's been yeah. you know it's been settled already why are we why are we even discussing it? it's it's totally been settled somebody i just saw one of the i am the science the 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 the, the, the i forgot her name the spokesperson for the white house uh karen jean uh, pierre karen G yeah. jean pierre she <laughs> said the other day that today would have been the ex anniversary of roe v wade had it not been overturned so they're going to keep it going like that and have the anniversary yeah. date of it even though it doesn't it's not it's no longer the law of the land anyway it's what like if? it's like when it's like when Arabs uh, mourn the. It's, it's not, never mind. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I'm like, wait, where are we going with this? Right. Holy smoke! I'm just I'm just not gonna go there. Yeah. But... Look at Brian taking the high ground. <laughs> I, I want to, but we already kind of wrapped the conversation, and that's like another podcast. I mean, we can unwrap it. Like it's you know. It's... No, I gotta go eat. I gotta go eat some fried chicken. Okay. Oh, you hungry? Yeah. I all right, smell it. Fried chicken well, if you're still here, thank there. you, thank you for still being with us. Now go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit a little like comment, leave a comment, all the things. And uh, if you need to get a hold of me and tell me what a dumbass I am for my stupid take, you can hit me up on Instagram at Super Dre. And uh, yeah, and other guys, they have ways you can reach them too, and and they're I'm... clearly bigger dumbasses than me. So you know, I'm at the Third Helix dot com. Find my info there. I'm at uh, at Matt Moore on Twitter. All of our handles are in the bottom, guys. So reach out to us. Uh, and we're gonna. I'm. I don't. I don't know how to put a poll up because everybody consumes in different places. So that's one of the things. But we're trying to figure out if we should do a live show or not. So uh, if you're if you would be interested in logging into a live show, um, we think there's probably going to be one coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we'll be sure to promo that and give you guys the time and date. Um, so we're just really interested if all of you that are listeners, if you would be interested in a live show, let us know somehow to let us know if it's going to be useful. Cause the last thing we want to do is do a live show and go through all the extra work and then have no one log in. That'd be hmm. a little, uh, I'd like to be at least whelmed, not underwhelmed. <laughs> I'd like <laughs> to not be embarrassed. That's what <laughs> yeah. so, so let us know. Yeah, for sure. Any other but, thoughts, uh, Dre? Any last thoughts on on uh, masculinity? Um, yeah, my my only thought is like, hey, look, we're we're, we're not men in in um, in for ourselves. the The thing about being a man is to sacrifice. Your your reason is to sacrifice. You need to find what that sacrifice is. Hopefully, it's something worthy like a fucking family. But uh, you know, you, you live for others. And use that that strength for for others. You sound like Andrew um, Tate. I like it. Maybe. Yeah, I kind of look like him too, since we're both half black. <laughs> I don't have the stupid accent, but uh... oh, I'm, I'm going to talk to you like Tristan and talks I, to Andrew. And I and I don't, you know, I don't sex traffic girls, but you know, whatever. It's allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, Alleg allegedly. Sorry, Andrew. You don't allegedly, kick my ass, Mister Kickboxer, because <laughs> I know you're watching, Andrew. So, um. But, uh, Brian, yeah. last thoughts? Say oh, Browns? Man, I just have a whole lot of thoughts to what Dre just said, but I did. now I'm going to wrap. I'm going to wrap. No more thoughts? Back to you, Matt. I, I don't I don't have any other safe thoughts either. I think Dre kind of kind of summed it up nicely. I think the point of the point of masculinity is to interface with femininity, right? And it's to provide that buffer. I mean, I I'll go a step further than what Dre said. I'll up him not to compete, but just to take it to another thought is that masculinity is exists on earth to provide a safe space for femininity to do what it needs to do to nurture 
right? Femininity does, isn't allowed to nurture if masculinity is not there to block and protect and defend and provide. And I think that seems to be what's misunderstood about it is it's, it's not a, it's not a power play and it's not a, it's not dominance in, in the sense of dominating women. It's it, the only right. social dominance for masculinity is to provide safety for the family and for the, 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 the community and the, you know, the, 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 the group round, right. I mean, all of the warriors, the police, the firefighters, right. They're all male dominated for a reason because that's what men do. And I think, somehow we've got to get back on the same page with the women. And I don't know what that answer is. I don't know what that looks like. Well, I, I think our, our, our society has given it as assigned it with values. Like it's more valuable for a man to do this thing. And I think with, with women fighting to get that, that they've devalued themselves. That's because that. I, they think, want, I think that's they exactly. Yeah. They want to be a man. And, and that's, yeah. I was... and, and, and if, and if we, if we put the value of the thing in its proper place, and I mean, tell me a woman doesn't go on a pestle for for a man that's sacrificing, right? Like, it's it's the most beautiful thing we've seen. It's I, the I, thing we want I to defy. be with. It's the thing we want to touch. It's what we want to do, and and that's why we and exist. It, and it's not that masculinity for, uniquely sacrifices. And sacrifice isn't sacrifice for its own sake. It's it, that's just life. Life agree. is you. You invest yourself in other people. If you haven't invested yourself in other people, then you've wasted your life. Yeah. Uh, maybe you had a good time, but you know that your life is empty and it didn't go anywhere. But there are ways that men can can invest in other and in, in other lives, and the, there are ways that women can. And if you're if you're trying to be something you're not, if you're a woman trying to be like be a man you're wasting your investment. It's, it, it's just, you're, you're not being true to what you could be. Yeah. And the same with a man who isn't, who has taken this, this feminist view of what his masculinity is and treating it as something toxic that he needs, that he needs to, to kill in order to, uh, in order to, to, to satisfy this, uh, the spirit of the age that says masculinity is toxic. Yeah. Um, it's it's just it's anti-human um i i know we're trying to wrap but this just triggered a second a, a, no, a, sec, a secondary <laughs> thought so dre, dre had made a point earlier about uh the pedestal and whatnot and then in tying back to your scorekeeping comment that you made sure um one of the things i like to brag on about my relationship with carrie is she goes out of her way to brag to her friends the women that she's in contact with about how spoiled she is about the fact that I've provided a life for her that allows her to do what she wants relatively within, you know, she gets to come and go and she gets to drive this and go here and do these things. Um, but all of my friends constantly remind me about how good I have it with the fact that Carrie lets me get away with all of the crap that I get away with and the, my sure. personality and all that. And to me, that's more the winning is rather than counting who's ahead is letting both think that they got the better end of the deal. Like that's, that's the perfect symbiosis right there. Right. Because I, I think so. It, there's no pulling. We're, we're both pushing. I'm pushing all of the things that I can her way. And she's pushing back with, you know, emotional uh, nurturing and 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 love and all of the things that allow me to win. And it's funny because just to make a full circle back to Andrew Tate, he talks about that when he talks about what men value in in a woman. It, that it's not it's not uh, it's not a specific thing. He goes, you want to know what makes a man feel like a baller is if he can come home at three o'clock in the morning with his buddies and his wife doesn't yell at him and instead she says, your boys want something to eat. Let me cook you something real quick. He goes, nothing makes a guy look amazing to his friends than to be able to walk in late at night. And this, he's, he's making a point. It's not like that's what I do with my wife, but I probably could get away with that to be quite honest. Like <laughs> Dre knows Carrie pretty well. I could probably get away with that at least a couple she, of times. <laughs> she's, she's pretty hospitable all the time when, but, whenever I'm over. But the stuff I'm talking about the stuff that I've gotten away with personally. Like, right. like stuff that, you know, a lot of guys would be in the quote unquote doghouse over, right? Like I've woken up before from a pretty rough weekend and I'm like, she's still in my bedroom. Oh, she's still here. Awesome. 
<laughs> right. I was like, I was pretty, I was pretty wild last night. Like, I, I mean, you know, he, he might have a conversation, you know, you know <laughs> but, uh, but, but that's to me, that's, that's a different kind of thing. And again, it goes back into that give and take. And it's like, it, if both sides are trying to win, then that's how you win. It's not about taking, it's about giving. And you know, 100%. I, I, yeah. I, somehow Agreed. we've got to yeah. we've got yeah. to figure that out back out in society. Yeah, we've got to get men and women are competing with each other. Yeah, is, we've we've got, we've got to start helping each other win. It, rather, it than, is it is it is literally destroying our civilization. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, I already said that. So yeah, so so that's our thoughts. And uh, let us know if you agree or if you disagree. Let us know. And uh, go ahead and stay enlightened. Stay curious. And we will see you next week. God bless. Yeah, everybody.